Folks, this is Pete from Pete's Tackle here, and I've brought in a good friend of mine and pro staff, Levi Ployhar. Uh, this is Levi. I'll let you give you a little bit. Let let him give you a little bit of his bass fishing background and fishing background, and then I will start asking him a few questions. Yeah, I'm Levi Ployhar. I've been fishing in the Flathead for oh gosh, I suppose a better part of ten years. Grew up in the. Uh, Ronan Polson area to start with um, and have been bass fishing and fishing for all different species for years and years and years um, better part of 20 something years I guess and uh, we're over here at Pete's Tackle and we're going to talk a little bit about, a bit about bait cast rods and stuff for those guys that don't know too much about bait casters how to set them up for crankbaits or worms or anything like that you know because I know there's different settings on them, mm -hmm. and I, and I'll personally say I'm green to it. I know enough from being around you, Levi, and and a few other guys that fish bait casters quite a bit. But I'll reach in and grab a spin rod over a bait caster nine times out of ten. And but I'm starting to force myself to learn how to use these bait casters, learn how to use them properly. But I've never really had a, in somebody tell me how to set it up and mm -hmm. set the the magnetics in them and set the set the brake on the side, the tensioner on the side. So, what do you do? Well, I mean, you, this here, you know, is a bait caster that you would, I, you know, you would use for crankbait fishing, probably mm -hmm. more than anything. Um, I mean, these come in left hand and right hand. You know, I'm a lefty. I've had people say. I'm a righty. I've had people say, never trust a guy that cranks with his left hand. But I do pretty good cranking with my left hand. <laughs> but these never used to have a left hand crank. They always used to be on the right. Right hand side. Yeah. This yep. is this is within the last probably ten. Twelve years. Ten or twelve years <clears throat> they've they've got <clears throat> these out, which is really nice for me because. You know, when you grow up with a spinning reel your entire life, reeling with your left hand. And that's how I am. It's just really hard for me to jump over to a right hand reel. But anyway, this is what you want to use for a bait caster. I like to use a gear ratio of about 6.4 or 6.8 when I'm cranking. I don't like a high speed crank. I know for some people, they like that high speed reel speed because they can just sit there and they can barely turn it. But I like to be able to turn it in rhythm with my bait and I just feel way more confident with like a 6-4 ratio or a 6-8 ratio or something like that. I don't like a super fast. And when you're turning that bait, you know, with that lower gear, it's easier too. Especially if you start fishing like a bigger, bigger bait, like a deep diver or something like that. Yeah. And you're trying to turn it with like a 7-4 or 7-5 reel ratio. It gets hard. I mean, if you try to throw that all day long, it's much easier if you go down in your gear ratio and just be able to wind that thing easily. Well, that that that's that's what a lot of bass, young people coming up into the sport, don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, even me working in a sporting goods store years ago, uh, trying to explain, uh, we had the lower gear stuff when I first started fishing with bait casters. We had the Abu Garcias and stuff like that and a few Shimano's and stuff like that. But these newer reels are so well tuned but you got you can have 15 reels for di different opportunities. Well yeah and there's a reason they make different ratios of speed. I mean there's a reason they do that. It's because you don't want to be pulling in more line than you have to but you want to be reeling at the speed that you're comfortable reeling at. If you're working a bait, you know, and you're casting out there and working it at a speed, do you really want your crankbait coming in? You know, every time you crank that thing, it's ripping in 30 inches. Every revolution's like 30, I mean, this, this is probably around 30 inches it brings in line, every time. That means you gotta slow that thing down. You know, whereas if you have like a 6.4, you know, something like that. You're bringing, 20 You're bringing some in inches. 22, 23 inches of line. You know, it's much easier than you can keep that, you know, that movement in your hand and it's not going to wear you out or make you feel like this is a little awkward feeling, you know. It's just for me personally, that's what I like to do. I like to get a lower geared ratio for, for crankbaiting, especially. 
you know, if I'm flipping big jigs or flipping worms or something, and you know, you're letting that bait sit on the bottom and you're popping it or something like that, and then a bass grabs that bait, you want to be able to bring, you want to be able to bring that line in as quick as you can. You know, that's where I use those high gear, high fast ratio reels. So the heavy cover, yeah, heavy cover, stuff like that. When you want to bring that bait in as quick as you can, mm -hmm. you got a bass down inside of a tree. He grabs that bait and you got something that can't pick up line very fast, it's not as efficient as it would be, you know, to have a 7374 7, reel. Right. Okay, so. change the subject a little bit, uh, Levi. Uh, what would you choose for a new person just going out and starting to use crankbait rods? Uh, mono, monofilament or a braided line or a fluorocarbon? Yep, so with crankbaiting in particular, you always want to run a fluorocarbon. So fluorocarbon sinks, so that's that's a key to crankbaiting. I mean, nobody crankbaits on the top of the water, you know? And the thing I don't like about braid with crankbaiting is fish tend to get off of crankbaits easier than they do, say, a jig or even a straight EWG hook. Is that due to the fact that there's no stretch in that line? There's no stretch in braid line and when cool. they light wire hooks in their mouth they pull out. They pull out when they're fighting and stuff. You know because think about it that bait's moving at a pretty good clip in the water even if it's moving at a slow clip that fish is coming at whatever angle he sees your bait at. Typically it's from behind but sometimes they'll hit it from the side you know the front. They're ambushing that that bait and whatever hook gets caught in that fish, that's the hook you're going to hopefully get that fish in with. So the more stretch, the better when it comes to crankbait fishing. I mean, even these guys that fish these, you know, glass rods um, over the the uh, graphite. Graphite. I think there is something mm -hmm. to that. I have a glass rod. Um, I like the more bend, the better with a crankbait. I mean, I like my pull to just bend all over, except for like my first like three feet. You know, that stuff, that needs to stay pretty, pretty stiff. But it just keeps the hooks in the mouth of that fish better, you know? And then you got, you got your line that has a little stretch, you got your rod that's got pretty good, pretty good flex to it, because that thing all needs to be loaded the whole time that fish is on. So when I say loaded, that's your rod bent over the whole time. If that rod comes back and you know if that fish is catching up with you reeling, then you're you're gonna lose him. There's a lot of there's a good chance you're gonna lose that fish. And so, in a tournament, a lost fish is lost a, dollars. It is it exactly lost dollars. It is, and that's and you don't want that. So over the years, I've I've tested and tuned and and come up with my personal preferences in these bait casters for crankbait rods. So what are some of your personal preferences? So go out, get yourself. <clears throat> A glass rod or a carbon fiber rod that's like a medium medium action with a fast taper you know that'll give you your backbone that'll give you your flex in that rod and I like I like a little bit longer rod I don't like anything really that's less six six seven foot yep seven foot I like the seven foot I'm pretty tall so seven foot's kind of I don't really like going that's below seven I, foot. I fish seven foot um, and yeah you just you just a newcomer and get a reel that has a little bit lower gear ratio put yourself if you're fishing these 1.5s put yourself 10 pound test on there 10 10 pound fluorocarbon if you're going to go up something bigger you know go 12 15 you know fluorocarbons and that those are the lines i would use for crankbait fishing you're going to get you're going to get that stretch you're going to get that you know you don't want that stiff hooks pull out of your mouth type stuff you know so rod and reel are very important and line to keeping those fish pinned um, I've lost a lot of fish on crankbaits and it probably has a lot to do with your equipment you know equipment versus the bait itself mm -hmm, versus the bait itself so here going into another change of the subject again which I like to do on Levi he loves it but he probably just hates me <laughs> with that other rod there yep. that's rigged up with a blade bait how would you set that reel up for that blade bait or a crankbait so they understand a little bit of the drop and everything so it casts 
fairly well for them and how to set up their, their casting. Um, so the way I would do it um, is to tie your bait on. Um, and then when you tie your bait on, I just take and I, I flip my bail with my bait hanging off. Here, I'll take it. Get that for you. I do, so a, I, would, I do a wrap on my rods. Uh, a friend of mine, Rick, taught me this years ago. It was before we had rod rod sleeves, rod sleeves and stuff. Yeah. To uh, wrap it and it don't get caught up in your yeah. so much in your. Uh, There we go. So yeah, so then I would take this bait and I would Oh, got oh, me. Got you on the jeans. There. Set the hook. <laughs> so then you take the bait and you watch how fast that comes out. Okay? So we might want to bring that into the camera a little bit more. Try to here. So the bait um, basically this bait when you flip that bail over that bait should come out like that. You see how that bait just comes out? That's about right. You got a little bit of it in the spool there, but um, if that bait's falling out really fast, let's say I let that bait out and it hits the, the ground and I got a big ball, a big rat's nest here in my reel, like it just balls up, that means you're too loose. Too loose, okay. You're too loose. So the way you would, you would tension this is with this thing right here. This is your tensioner. So you go back to tighten it, forward to loosen it on most of them. Some of them I think are a little different. Some have clickers in them. Yep. And, and then, so then you would do that until you get this thing dialed in. Because, man, if you fling this thing out there and it's too loose, you're going to ball this reel up and it's just going to be a disaster. Especially with these because they're kind of lightweight. Got to be careful. So you want to you want to mess with that a little bit. And then over here, you're going to have, this is your braking system. Always start out on a pretty high brake system. Like they have max and then they have free. Free would be no brake at all. Okay. And to throw a bait free without really watching it, you're going to get a bad rat's nest. You're going to ball that thing up. Really, I know all about those. Really bad. And then wind in the wind and stuff, there's just things you got to do. You got to tweak them. I'm always tweaking my reels. Always. So you want to, so you want, I'm just checking them. When I flip the bail over, let it go down. Flip the bail over, let it go down. And then I, and then I do a practice cast, you know. Okay, that's good. Because if I go from a 1.5 to a 2.5, Totally There's a difference. difference. Totally There's different. a difference. You got to change it because with this, this heavier bait, it's going to go further out there, but it may just ball me up unless I change my braking system or this magnetic system over here. You know, it's just it's weird how these work. But oh, wow. That's just... once you get the hang of it, they're pretty easy. But for beginners or people that are just starting out with these, you know, flip that bail over and see how tight that line is coming out of there. You want it to come out freely, but you don't want it to just go fly into the floor when you flip the bail over and boom, and then the line just goes like that and balls up. You don't yeah. want that. And you so, don't want to have it too tight where you throw your rod over the boat exactly. either. Didn't that happen yeah. last weekend with me? So, yeah, you don't want to throw your rod in the water. This this one was in the water, fully submerged, but Ben, or uh, Pete, <laughs> yeah. he saved it. So, uh, but yeah, you, these, these bait casters are the way to go, though, when it comes to crankbait fishing. And a lot of fishing. They really are. They're so much more efficient when it comes to casting and reeling. And it, they pick up line so much smoother. And they're I so much found what, easier. I found a little bit of what I'm doing with them now is that I'm getting less fatigued mm -hmm. than I did with a spinning reel. Yep. In certain situations. We were out jigging for lake trout this last weekend and pitching them out and bringing them back. I had no fatigue in my arm until I caught that back. Yeah, big one. Yeah, yeah. But needless to say, they're a versatile rod. You can use them for no. big fish. Yeah, all kinds. You know, of fish. all kinds of fish. It's just all not just strictly for bass. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're just they are the way to go for a lot of baits, uh, and people shouldn't be afraid of them. I know certain people probably are like intimidated. Like I've always used a spinning reel. I can't use a bait caster. Well, yes, you can. I mean, it's a t it's a technique change. It is a little bit of technique change. Now, what do you recommend for somebody that buys one and wants to learn how to cast it? Do you just go straight out to the water and start using it, or do you recommend? 
I practice in your yard a little bit practice at your in house. Your yard. Yeah, I do some practice, and I mean, when you get it, get it spooled up, put a dummy bait on there, and cast it around, and get the hang of it. I mean, it's going to be a lot better than just going out and being all pissed off when you're trying to catch fish. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, the rat's nest will do that to you in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, even the best guys. Yeah. So what There's, are some of the? I'm going to change it up a little yep. bit. Uh, well, but I'll let you finish what you were going to say. Well, just. If you are a beginner with these, remember, go to max on this. So go all the way to your max setting, or it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 is going to be your yeah. max setting. Right. Go to your max setting to begin with, and then work your way down from there to get a feel for how the bait is casting. Yeah. And then this is just going to feed. This will, this will feed your line out quicker or slower. But this is going to save you this breaking system. That'll save you in the wind and yep, save and you from those big balled up rats nests and stuff. So. Well, boy, Levi, that that's been just awesome just hearing it from a pro. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm quite a pro, but I have used these a lot. So, um, so we went over rods, we went over crankbaits. Uh, cool. 